Hi friends, it's Shari. Today I am creating a platform pop-up card and I'm going to be showing you how to look at those cloud add-ons a little bit differently. First, I'm going to start by stamping out my images. I'm creating a jungle scene, so I'm using that little monkey from Critters in the Jungle as well as the toucans, the jaguar, and the little lizard from Toucan Do It. I'm stamping out my images in some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink so that I can do some coloring with my Copic markers. And I'm going to start out by coloring the little monkey. So the idea behind this card was to use the cloud inserts as a tree canopy. So that is why I started out with the little monkey so that he could be up in the tree. I'm using some E25 for the shadows and then I'm blending out with my E23. And then I'm just coming back with that dark color again and adding a little more shadow. For the face, I'm using E21 and just adding two layers up where I want a little bit of a shadow. I use the same color for the ears as well. And then I'm moving on to my two cans. So I have a red, an orange, and a yellow to color in the beak. You could use any combination of red, orange, and yellow. And then for the body, I'm using some dark neutral grays. So I'm starting out with an in nine, which is almost black, coloring the shadows, and then I'm coming back in with an in six. And instead of coloring them just black, this will allow the lines to show up at least a little bit and you'll get some of the detail of the image. Then I'll go back in with that same E21 I used on the monkey's face to color in the part where his eye is. And then now I'm moving on to my little jaguar. I have two colors of yellow here. A YR15 is the dark color I'm using right now for the shadows. And then I'm going to go all over with that YR12, which is a lighter orangey yellow color. I am making sure to avoid the spots so that I can color those in with a dark brown. I'm also going to avoid the nose as well and I will color that in with an even lighter color. So here's the nose with that Y32 and then I'm using this E74 for the spots as well as the edges of the ears and the nose. Now moving on to that little vine, I did end up stamping a second one to use in my tree and I also stamped some of the leaves from the Critters in the Jungle set to use as well. You'll see that here in a little bit. Now for my little lizard, I thought it would be fun to brighten him up. They're always a great opportunity to use some really bright colors. So for this one, I'm using purples and then little greens for the accents. For my butterflies, I decided to go with the colors of monarch butterflies and use some dark grays, which is the same dark grays I used for the toucans, and then a bright orange. So I'm using that darker gray for the tips of the butterfly wings and then the N6, the slightly lighter one, for the circles. And then I use my coordinating dies to cut out all my images and I'll set those aside. Now for my platform pop-up, I've cut the base from the green watercolor wishes paper and I am folding them in such a way and I cut them in such a way so that the darker side of the paper is the part that is on the outside of the box. I'm just folding along all the score lines that the die creates and I'm just prepping these pieces to be ready to assemble my box. Then I'm going to take my double-sided tape and put it on the tabs of each of these. So I have the large tab at the top and the small tab on the side. And I'll just go ahead and do that for the other one. I'll set these aside and I'll assemble them in a little bit. Before I assemble, I want to do a little more work on some of the other pieces for this card. So I've cut out of that same green watercolor wishes, the platform pop-up cloud wraparound, as well as the 
Platform Pop-Up Cloud Insert. So these are going to be my foliage and my tree on my project. I am going to do some stenciling on these wraparound pieces. So I've used some temporary adhesive to stick them down to my media mat. And I've placed them so that I can stencil both pieces at once with one stencil. I've pulled out my tropical leaves background stencils and I'm starting with the first one. I've made sure that the Lawn Fawn logo is at the bottom so I can line up the second one easy. And I'm using jalapeno ink for my first color. This is the lighter of my two colors. And I'm just going in with a light hand and I'm going to get this really fun green on green, tone on tone look. And I do like that I can do both of these pieces at the same time and they're guaranteed to be very different from each other. So I'm now moving on and inking up the second one up there. And once I get all of the leaves on these two cloud wraparound pieces inked, I'll move on to the second stencil. I did also use the grid on my mat to help line up my stencil, so that will help me easily line up the second one using those squares. So this is going to fill in those voids that the first stencil left. And for this one, I'm using Noble Fur ink. So this is a bit darker. And we're going to get two colors of leaves. I did pick the stencil with more leaves for my lighter color so that my darker leaves were a little bit fewer and further between. And now that I have inked all those up, I can pull my stencil away and we get this really cool reveal of those leaves on the green. Now I also wanted to make my tree canopy, which is the cloud insert here, match the outside. So I'm using my jalapeno ink and my blending brush to just kind of touch the edges of that and darken them up. And then I'm actually going to take my paper trimmer and cut off that rectangle at the bottom where it usually gets inserted into the platform pop-up because I'm going to be inserting it a little bit different. This will also allow me to ink up the bottom of this big cloud at the bottom so that my whole tree canopy looks the same. Now for the trunk of the tree. This is kind of an abstract trunk of the tree. I'm using some paper bag cardstock and my stitched wood grain backdrop. And I've just cut a piece that's a lot bigger than what I need. And you can see there, I was kind of looking at how wide I wanted to trim this. Two inches works great. It's not too wide, but it still looks like a big fat tree trunk. Now I'm going to figure out how tall it needs to be. So I decided to go ahead and assemble my box so that I can kind of tuck it in there and see how tall it needs to be and how it's going to look. So I've pulled off the liner paper from my adhesive for that wraparound piece. I did put it back onto that little one because I'm not going to completely enclose this just yet. And then I'm going to pull it off of the large tabs and fold those pieces up to make my little boxes. And I did this just so I can see what that box looks like, insert my tree trunk in there, and kind of figure out how tall I want my tree. So you can see I've got excess cardstock sticking up behind there. So I'm just going to draw a pencil line about where it needs to be trimmed and I'll just trim that off. So now I have this rectangle that is representing my tree trunk. And this is why I did not want to go ahead and assemble my box because I need to stick my little tree trunk in there. So I'm just using some liquid glue. This is going to be sandwiched between the two big rectangular pieces just like the cloud insert would be. And then I can put some double-sided tape all over that rectangular piece and completely close my box. And I can take off that liner paper from the little tab and finish the outside of the box as well. And now I can see how much that tree trunk sticks up. I'm going to add some liquid glue to the top and then add my tree canopy at the top. And doesn't that look like a really cool tree? Now for my cloud wraparound, 
I'm going to fold this on the score lines that the die created as well and make sure that that temporary adhesive that's on the back is rubbed off so that it doesn't get hung up on the box when I try to slide this over. I'll add some double-sided adhesive to each of those little tabs and then I can use my grid mat to line these up and make my wraparound. So I like to line it up straight on my grid mat and then line up the two seams and then you can just fold it over and complete that wraparound box. So here's that wraparound with my tropical leaves and then I'm just going to work this around my box. I find it a little bit easier to do when it's kind of flat. Once I get it in there, I can just slide it down. And then look how cute that is with those tropical leaves around it. Now to secure the wrap around, what I like to do is kind of push it up a little bit, take some of my thin double-sided tape, and just put a line of that right along the bottom of the box on both sides. Then I can just pull off the liner tape and I can just slide that wrap around down and it will stick to that adhesive on the bottom and be nice and secure. So you can just push that down, make sure it's at the bottom, and then I'm just going to reinforce it by pressing it with my fingers. I kind of pushed it a little too far, but you can see that it doesn't stick immediately. Then when you press it with your fingers, it's gonna be nice and stuck down. So there is my finished jungle box, and now I can start to add my critters to my little jungle scene. So I have these cute little toucans that are perfect to be up in the tree. And then I have the vine from Critters in the Jungle, which I think makes this tree look even more like it's in the jungle. And it gives my little monkey a place to hold on to. Now I did end up cutting another vine and you'll see me add that here in a little bit that's going to drape down towards the trunk of the tree. I'm adding my little jaguar on the front with that really big cloud right there. That's a perfect place for a tall critter. And then I'm going to add my little butterflies on each side as well as my cute little purple lizard along the bottom. Now here is my other vine that I colored and cut out. And I just think that looks really nice, hanging all the way down onto the trunk. Kind of decorates the trunk a little bit as well. And then to cover up the two slots that I didn't end up using, I cut some of these leaves. They're also from Critters in the Jungle. There's a big one and a small one, and I just decided to lay those down like they're on the ground, and they cover up that slot perfectly. But also decorate that kind of flat area that's down inside the box. Now of course I need a sentiment for this cute little pop-up card so I'm using the stamp set from Two Can Do It that says have a wild day. I am inking it up selectively so that I have the first two words stamped separate from the last two words and I'm just stamping them in opposite corners of this little scrap piece of speckled eggshell cardstock and then I'm going to take my paper trimmer and trim it down into two little banners. So I've cut my long strip and then I'll just trim this with my scissors. So I have the have a and wild day as two separate lines that I can stack one on top of the other. And I'm just gonna tuck those right in here beside my Jaguar. The Wild Day fits perfectly right above its tail, and then I can fit that have a right above it. And then to add a little embellishment, I have some guava cardstock hearts cut from the Hearts and Stars with Skinny Tag die that I just keep on hand. They're the perfect little embellishments. I've added a few to the tree, one underneath the sentiment, and then I'll add one to each of those front sides of the box. Now I also felt like the back was a little bit messy because you could see my 
cut off tree so I just cut a second piece of those cloud inserts and I know that you're seeing the back of this but the stitching detail is still there but I think it just cleans it up nicely and hides that trunk of the tree. And then of course nothing is complete without a little bit of glitter so I just went in with my stickles glitter glue and added a little bit of glitter to each of those little hearts as well as the dots on the butterflies. And then here is my finished card and I just think it turned out so cute. I had this idea for a little while of a unique way to use those cloud add-ons and I really love the way it turned out. So I hope that this inspires you to kind of look at those supplies differently and try something new with the clouds that may not be making clouds. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.